This is my Craftsman air compressor. The belt on this compressor is broken. I bought a new belt for it. This cost me about $23, which was shipping inclusive. I'm pretty excited about that. And I have a handful of tools here that I'm going to be using. I've already started this a little bit. What I'm using, I've got, this is a thread locker, Phillips screwdriver. This is a T45 Torx. T45 Torx head, which if we can get a focus on that, that'd be really exciting. Or not, no. Um, this is a breaker bar and a couple of sockets and an adapter. These two items, this strange crowbar, they're not very important. I'm just using these for leverage, so you'll see how that goes on. But this is um, just whatever you can use for leverage. So we're going we're gonna to move in so that you can get a closer look at the compressor, and then we'll uh, progress. This is a better view of the release, of the pressure release valve. Um, it's good to just actually just to see that this thing even functions in general. But you want to make sure that all the air is out of the tank before you're servicing this thing. And you know, this, is the, this is the power switch. Again, cable, if we come back a little bit, gauges are here just to create kind of a relative where it is. So we'll zoom out and then reposition you. And thus this begins. So there's, this is a Phillips screwdriver. There are two screws, which there's one, there's one right here, and there's one on the other side, which I've already taken those out. Um, there's three screws, which keep these halves together, and those are out as well. So what we're gonna do is we're going to push this guy forward, and maybe you can see this thing move along. The screws are running out, so this thing might disrupt. <clears throat> Flap open on us, excuse me. We're going, we're going backwards. We're going, no, we're not going this way, we're going that way. So you can see this thing's free. The screws are already out. And this will just open up. Um. Well, I'll tell you what, this didn't come off as peacefully, and I, as I said, I'd started some of this, and uh, one of the things I did was hang it on. And this is the side that comes off easier anyways. So this is obviously the outside of the compressor. When I took this off, this little rubber bumper is supposed to go right here. As you can barely see, that's okay. Um, that's gonna need to go on, and that's fine, we can just keep that to the side. This is my broken belt. Now, you know, how did I know it was a broken belt before opening this whole thing up? Well, you can you can see it if you look through these vents on here. And um, when you turn the compressor on, you can hear that it's just winding out, and out of the back end, as you can see, no, you, can, you can barely see, there's a fan back here which still spins, and it still blows air out of the back end. So, um, yeah, big tip. If you can see a broken belt in between the vents, you probably have a broken belt. Another important thing to notice is that this is still, this is still free spinning. Um, if the belt had broken because this is jammed, you got something else going on. But that's uh, not the case here, so we're going to replace the belt. This, as you can see, is the bolt, which the, we're going to get a closer look inside here to see how the belt goes in. This, um, I've already loosened this. This is going to need to be loosened and moved forward so that the belt can come into it. And uh, we'll explore that in a second again. Torx head bit. So we'll just um, crank that off. Now, this is, again, a weird pry bar. Um, what I've been doing is just pushing this thing in here. I don't know if you can see that too well. Let's, you know, we can even do it like that so it's a little bit more obvious. And then this is going to jam up against the uh, body of the compressor. And then we can get some torque on this thing. And get this bolt out. Now I've taken this bolt out and put it in before. And I put Loctite on it. It seems like it held up pretty well. Um, looks like I might have uh, kicked some grease out of my replacement bearing. But otherwise we're, we're doing okay with this. So this is the capture bolt for the um, piston bearing. This we're going to... We're going to need to slide that forward to get the belt over the pulleys, and then we're going to change your view again, yet again, and then um, we'll get a better look at that. All right, so I'll show you this view. I kind of like this. This is the bolt we just took out, and I'm going to take it out again. Um, this, is the, this is the piston that actually, this, excuse me, this is the crank arm that operates the piston, which actually provides pressure. So we're going to take that bolt out, and you can see where this belt needs to go. We're going to slide this out of the way. You can see this is the pulley, which um, delivers motion to the piston, and this little guy right here is, um, that little guy right there is the wheel that, that's hooked up directly to the motor. There's no belt tensioner in here, so... Um, this is going to be a very tight fit with the belt, and we're going to need to wiggle it on here. I'm going to clean this belt off with, you know, excuse me, I'm going to clean these two pulleys off with whatever I feel is an appropriate solvent, and then I'll, I'll clean the, I'll clean a little bit on there, and then um, we'll put the belt on. And I'm going to put the belt on, and I'm just going to do it, and I'll share any observations with you if I think it's uh, tricky or goofy. So yeah, there we are. All right, so the belt is on, as you can see. This is the new belt. I've taken the old belt, and I've taped it so I can kind of show you what I did. This is the piston. Now, if you can see, the, uh, the piston blocks this pulley but you need to get the belt around. So we loosen this up. Now I'm gonna push this in and just lay it off to the side there. This again is the old belt with just tape in it and it's a little slack so I can show you what I did. I, I walked it around the pulley and then just sort of wove it in behind the smaller pulley which the motor's on. Now what I did then is I sort of folded this thing down like that so I can get it over. There's a little, there's a little lip on this side of the pulley, on this side of the larger pulley. This needs to be actually slid onto it because there's, there's no adjuster on here so you're not gonna be able to put it on and then get a belt tensioner or something. So this came on here and then I pushed this on so that it engages the teeth and just kind of worked it back a little bit. Oop, there it goes that. And then, um, just kind of you know work this, work the pulley back and forth and slid this on, trying to keep it engaged, trying to keep this, 
disengage with the teeth as opposed to having it misaligned with the teeth and tearing that up. So this, you know, just kind of slowly worked it on and then push it over. And it's on, this is okay. You know, it sounds good. Um, the thing to notice that while we're here, and, you know, I think the question that uh, I asked myself was how did this belt fail? And really, I'm not entirely sure. This, I found this compressor, this is the belt that came with it. I was using this compressor when it did actually fail. And what was happening at the time was I was filling one of those large portable uh, containers for like you know, taking a, taking a, um, a compressed air tank outside to fill tires or something like that. And I think what I did was I created an unusual demand surge on this thing by you know pumping the, pumping this tank up and then dumping it all into a portable container. It was at that point that this thing just broke. So I'm guessing that it would be a situation kind of like if you're riding a bicycle and uh, you know, you're know you about to go up a hill and you decide to stand up and stand on one of the pedals, the chain breaks and you mess up your leg or whatever. So that's um, whether, this, whether this belt was weak, was weak to begin with or I had created an unnatural demand surge on this thing filling the uh, container up is something I'll try and figure out how I can avoid in the future. But um, here we are. So the, put it, reassembling this involves Probably, probably cleaning some of this off, putting some new Loctite on it, um, sticking that in. I'm going to use this guy again. To, and this is actually a much better view of this. Um, the, the body, oh, you can't see here. The, the body of the compressor is back here. So if I stick this in a spoke, I can I can get some torque on this thing. And this ought to work really well. So I will, um, I'll do that now. Anyway, the thing to remember is that these pistons have a uh, printed on them that said this side out, and I don't I don't think I've spun it. It actually turns out it's challenging to... No, I can spin that. So this side out is going to be important to remember. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to put this back on, and then, um, and then we'll come to this again. All right, so this... Um, I actually have some materials from when I did an earlier repair on this device, and I still have torque wrench settings for this. So as you can see, I've put a little Loctite on here to keep this in place. The um, printed material that I have suggested... It was like 315 inch-pounds to like 385 inch-pounds. It converts, um, as you expect, to uh, foot-pounds, which is 26 to 32 foot-pounds. I've introduced a... We've got a new tool here which is the torque wrench, the crappy old torque wrench that I didn't show you earlier. So we're going to tighten this up and then we're going to torque this down. Again, we're going to use this guy and, and cram that in here so we can get some torque on it. Um, I've got, you can see I got an adapter and here's my, my torque wrench again. This is going to fit in here a little fun. And we're going to bring this guy up to 26. We're going to bring this up to 26 pounds or 26 to 32 pounds. Oh, this, I, I just pulled up to about 30 foot-pounds. Um, and you can see this is pretty tight, and the action here is pretty good. And you know, this is labeled this side out. We're making sure to keep it that side out because there's some clearance issues back in here. And um, then we're going to start putting this thing, we're going to change your view and start putting this thing back together. We're going to put this together now. And if you remember this little rubber bush, this rubber uh, pad, which came off from the tool, this shell out, there's a little square in here. This little guy is going to fit inside of that little square receptacle for it. However, this needs to be actually on the compressor first. That's how the compressor is mounted inside of the shells, is off of, I think there's four of these little things, and this is just suspended in here. So we want to make sure this is pressed into it, as there's two of these rubber bushings, top and bottom. We want to make sure they're both in there. We want to see that the cord is um, seated in here properly. And then it's really just a matter of uh, kind of assembly is the reverse of this assembly. There is obviously a bunch of baffles in here. This, let's see, this copper pipe and the pulley need to be separated by this thing, and you're just sort of weaving it on in there. And, um, and then seeing that this bushing sits in the square pulley there. So we're gonna get this getting a little fussy. We'll get this together. Put together okay. I think I showed you in the beginning that there were three, one, two, three screws. I actually neglected to notice that there's um, another two in here underneath holding the clamshell together, in addition to the screw back here, which keeps the whole unit from coming back and forth. Um, mine didn't have those screws, I'm not putting them back in. So whatever. This on this compressor, my screws are stripped out on here. I'm going to be using zip ties to put together and I'll show you that together. I'll show you that how that comes together in a second. So I've pushed this together, I've set it on the rails, and now what I'm going to do is push this thing forward if I got it in here right. So this thing is actually being kept together by these clips down here as I push it forward into it. Uh, let's go any further forward. Yeah, that probably will. I'm going to try and get this guy in here a little bit better. And then we'll put the screws in and try this guy out. So I got this got the clamshell, I got the uh, outer shell together. There's two screws in here and on the other side to keep this thing from moving forward and backward. I have not put, um, I've not fastened these together. I'm not entirely happy with how this came together. So what I'm going to do is I've plugged this I plug this in, and I'm going to uh, turn the compressor on and bring it up and see how I think about it before I uh, finish up with these. So we're just going to see how this sounds. All right, well, I'm okay with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fasten these clamshells together, and uh, we're going to call it a day. This is also a nice opportunity to show you a really great view of the pressure release, which is how you would uh, just probably the quickest way to dump pressure on these things if you need to get rid of some air on it. So I'm going to unplug this, and then we'll finish it up, and then I'll bring this up to... Uh, I'll run this other mission. My, uh, my screws for holding this clamshell, they're stripped out. The, the plastic in here is stripped out. So what I'm doing is I'm using zip ties. And this, what I'm doing is I'm taking a complete, complete zip tie, and then I'm threading it through here. And then pulling that in. Now on the opposite side, where I'm pulling this through, this is a zip tie just like it. 
I'm going to take another zip tie and thread it on here. I'm going to cut the nut off of it. So it's like that. And then I'm going to push this thing in here. And uh, we'll see if this will reach. Yeah. So I'm going to use... I'll use just a hammer. I'm sure you could use a, a shoe. And I'm going to pull this thing in. I'm going to pull the zip tie. And then I'm going to hammer on the nut. And that's on there pretty good. So we'll do that for both of these. And then uh, we're going to put this on the floor. And we're going to run it up to do pressure and see how things look.